My guest today is Maggie Pint. Maggie, how are you? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I understand you know a lot about date and time. Is that true? Uh, generally speaking, yes. Yeah. Uh, tell me, uh, so I'm a software developer, as are you. Mm -hmm. And uh, why, is date, why, are, why is date and time so hard? Why is that a hard problem? So mostly I think date and time is a hard problem because we tend to want to think it isn't. We think, okay, well, I grew up and I can read a clock and mm -hmm. like, what else is there to know about date and time? And fundamentally, what I always tell people is that the biggest thing you need to know about date and time is that it's five o'clock somewhere. That's, so, that's yeah. my line. I use that a lot. Yeah, it's <laughs> really important. It's really important because you, you want to be able to drink liquor at any time of the day. <laughs> and that's an extremely important thing to engineers. And so... It's funny how <laughs> everyone on my show has always come back to drinking liquor. <laughs> I, I believe it. But anyways, uh, w when we say that, what we're actually saying is that everybody perceives time differently. Sure. And, uh, you know, when it's 11 o'clock in the morning here in the United States, it's like well after five in Asia. So, hey, it's cool, guys. Drink we up. can drink. And uh, that really gets us into trouble as engineers because frequently when we're dealing with date and time, we don't consider what that uh, data means to our users. Hmm. Um, there's this standard advice with date and time and programming that, um, you know, just store everything in a database in UTC and you will have no problems. What's and, wrong with that? Okay, so that's a huge lie. <laughs> um, the biggest thing is, um, say that you have a log of, say, messages entered into a system, simple message system. Okay. And then someone, and you store the, the times on those messages in UTC. Yep. And then someone comes to you and says, well, I want all the messages that were entered on the business day of August 5th. Okay, ah, so, so if you have users around the world, Ah, what, is that, what do they mean by the business day? What do day they mean by August? the business day? Sure. If all you have is a UTC timestamp, then you can't infer when the, you know, what business day was that entered in. You don't know because yeah. you don't have the perspective of the person who entered that date. Okay. So we get in trouble because we ignore perspectives like that. Ah, and, and ultimately, we have to use time zones to get that perspective information. Right, to define what you mean by business day on yeah. a date. Yep, yep. We had to use time zones. By the way, I crossed the international date line twice last week. I'm sure you were very confused. It was, uh, it was very tiring, actually. <laughs> did, did your phone work properly? Did everything go I well? I turned my phone off because it was a long, long trip. I would, would drain the batteries to even have it on that long. Okay, sure, sure. So, yeah, I mean, that can actually be a problem. You'll, you'll, you'll see issues where um, electronics don't keep up to date and time data. Like right now, um, all Windows computers in Novosbirsk, Ru Novosbirsk, Russia, which has 3 million people, huh? have a wrong uh, time. What? They made a change to the base offset for their time zone. Oh. I don't remember what the number was, but they like went from plus, probably about plus nine to plus 10 or something like that. Oh, yeah. And right. Microsoft actually didn't get the Windows update out to reflect that time zone change. Uh -huh. And they won't until October, so like it's all off, and it's because they decided very quickly to make that change to the time zone update, and you just can't keep updating the data. Hmm. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting problem where um, people decide, you know, governments decide to change <coughs> time zone information, and then uh, we as technologists can't keep up with it, and we can't keep up with those computations. Very interesting. I, I uh, in fact, th this leads me to my biggest beef in all of Microsoft software, okay. which is that when I select an all-day appointment and then I change time zones, it doesn't remember the day. Yep. People's <laughs> birthdays don't change just because I fly from Detroit to Chicago. Yep. Then my birthday is still this March 1st. And that's, that's fundamentally when you're dealing with date and time. Um, you're dealing there with what we would call a local time. And right. that's a time that is not relative to UTC or relative to the global right. timeline. And those are hard to deal with because they mean something different to everybody. And as people move, you have to change them. And I mean, probably one of the most difficult problems in date and time and programming is Outlook and, and the whole exchange ecosystem sure. because of, of problems with and that. I, I totally get that. If I have an appointment at 3 o'clock in Eastern Standard Time, that it should reflect Eastern Standard Time as I move. But all day appointments should be all day appointments regardless yes. of where I am. Yes. Somebody just made an arbitrary decision to say all day means midnight to midnight in my local time zone. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping to f if somebody on the Outlook team hears this. And it, actually, it. that's in discussion. Um, there has been some discussion within Microsoft about how to better handle that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really, I honestly don't know where they are with that, but I know that it 
has definitely been a point of contention. Um, is there anything, so are there any tools to help? Let's say, for example, I was a JavaScript developer. Sure. Are there tools to help me to better manage? So, as it happens, as it happens, I'm one of the maintainers of Moment.js, which is the kind of primary date and time library for JavaScript. Um, and our mission as a as a date and, and time library is to like fix JavaScript date. And JavaScript date is one of the most broken constructs that okay. ever existed in the history. Well, well JavaScript is almost all running client side. Yes. And so that's that's a challenge because yes. if you're, uh, uh, when I run an app and you're running a, if I look at a web page and you write the same web page, we're in different time zones, we'll see different data. Yes, month. absolutely. And and you get um, you know Moment Moment can help you with that. Moment actually provides. Say you wanted to display all of the dates in Pacific time okay. um, on your web page. Well, there's a, a limitation in JavaScript date where it only understands UTC and time local to the user's browser. Oh. So there's actually no way to have a user, say, in New York, see all of these times in Pacific time and do that on the client or do that in JavaScript at all, even unless if you're running a node, unless someone wrote the code to do that. And with Moment, we actually provide a Moment time zone, which will allow you to do time zone conversions in JavaScript so that you can actually give your users that kind of information. Oh, that's nice. Well, what else does Moment do? So the API itself for <coughs> JavaScript date is very, very um, rough. Uh, it has weird oddities. For instance, when you pass a string of a date, like you get a string of a date from a database or from an API, okay. and you pass it in the JavaScript date constructor, okay. it basically will not parse reliably. Um, for instance, there's no way to tell the JavaScript date constructor, I have a UK date format, so day, uh, month, year, right. and have that parse correctly in the United States. There's oh, literally it no way. Always uses the local system settings. Yeah, so it's going to assume that your month, day, day year. And so with Moment, we'll actually allow you to specify, like, I'm getting a date in this format. Mm. Think of it this way. Hmm. There are also some really odd uh, issues where JavaScript date, when you parse a date into it, will assume that the date is UTC if it's in a very specific format, okay. even if you didn't mean for that date to be UTC. Oh, okay. And you meant for that to be local time. Hmm. And again, there's no way to tell the date constructor to do it differently. Hmm. Okay. So with Moment, again, we will smooth that over for you and we'll uh, allow you to say, I have this date in this format and it is a UTC date hmm. or it is a date local to the user or it is a date in this time zone. Oh, I see. And JavaScript date just doesn't let you do that. Right. Uh, any other, anything else that will help you with? Um, we have some very nice features around internationalization. Uh. So we support over 100 languages mm -hmm. in Moment, and you're able to tell Moment, you know, display for me in Arabic this date in long format with the month name, or display for me in Chinese or in French, or actually we support Klingon because we're funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> that would be star dates then, right? Uh, no, regular Gregorian calendar dates, but oh, yeah. with the Klingon month names, there's there's a Klingon language institute that actually gave us all of the information about how to display the dates in Klingon. Uh, so we can do that for you if that's a need. I that's even have cool. a Chrome extension that you can turn on that will turn all the dates in your browser to Klingon because I thought it was funny. <laughs> it's fun for about four minutes, and then you're like, I better turn that so off. So it probably does Romulan also, because I think did the Klingons descend from the Romulans? They probably have the same date format. I don't know. I don't know either. I maybe. I mean, I think they did, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look that up. Right, that'll be an exercise for the viewers. <laughs> so, does MomentJS does it also do like uh, daytime math? Yes. Which is also a challenge. Absolutely, it'll do daytime math for you. It'll handle uh, time zone boundaries, so math across time zone boundaries, oh, if you need that. And it also cleans up like in JavaScript date. Say you wanna add three days to mm -hmm. the date, right. you literally have to do a get set. There's no add three days. So you have to, you know, get date plus three set. And, and Moment will clean that up and let you do simple things like add three just days or subtract two weeks. Read, and it'll right. just clean it up and it'll do things like the start of the week, which is like, if you want to get the start of the week for a given date in JavaScript, it's like 10 lines of code and in Moment it's 10 characters, <laughs> you know, 12 how, characters. How long have you been um, maintaining this library? About a year. About a year. About okay, a year. and uh, are there is it done, or are there new features you want to add to it? 
Absolutely. So um, in a lot of ways, Moment is very feature complete. It is a five-year-old library and we aren't being inundated with feature requests at this point. But what we always want to say as open source maintainers is that we don't want to just give you something that works. We want to give you the best possible library. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we have some flux going on with Moment. Um, our original author, Tim Wood, um, has stepped down from the project just sheerly out of burnout. I mean, with Moment, we five get- Five years is a long time to maintain the project. Five years is a long time. We get five and a half million NPM downloads a month. So we're, t we're talking a lot, a lot of people. That's just NPM. You know, we don't even know with CDNs or any other package managers. And Tim was just done. And so, uh, you know, thank you, Tim Wood, for your wonderful work. Thank and you. so we're, we're, we're reorganizing. We're looking at who's going to take point and lead on a few things. And as part of that, we're looking at the library and we're saying, how can we improve this? And the big thing is we got just resounding demand from our users to take the library immutable. And hmm. we as a maintainers team really agree with that. You know, the reason that moment was made as a mutable, you know, you mutate the date object. When you add five days, it adds five days to the date you have. It doesn't give you a new date five okay. days later. So it's mutable. And that's because JavaScript date is mutable and we're a wrapper for JavaScript date. But when you talk about programming fundamentals, dates are value objects. Okay. So when you're talking about domain-driven design, you have a value object, and that's an object that is identified by its characteristics. Okay. It doesn't have an ID. It only has its characteristics. And when you have a value object, it should nearly always be immutable. That's just best practice in software. So there's this huge fundamental flaw in Moment, and we want to clean it up. And the community has really called to us and said, we want immutable Moment that will reduce the number of bugs in our code that will drastically improve this code base. Ah, okay. But I mentioned the number of users. You know, we get almost 6 million NPM downloads a month, and that's not even all of them. And these people are perhaps relying on our code to be mutable, right? Yeah, so that might have, doesn't sound backward compatible. It so like it is not backward compatible at all. And for, for most users, it's not going to be that big a deal. Because most users just parse a date and format it, and the mutability doesn't matter much. But if you're doing big business logic with dates with Moment, which you can, we're a heavy lifting date library, then you're going to have some problems with the change from, from mutable to immutable. And we actually, as a maintainers team, we got kind of stuck. Hmm. We were like, can we do this to our users? Can we tell them, you need to go and like rewrite stuff? And ultimately, what we had to say to ourselves was, we're engineers, and we want progress. Oh. So we don't want to hold this library back for the sake of people who don't want to upgrade. And we're super empathetic. We understand that we make this kind of breaking change, and that's very hard on you. But we can't hold our library back because of that. So right. we're going to move forward with a V3. So it's a matter of, uh, yeah, there's there's pain involved, but it's uh, it's worth it because of the benefits of the immutability. Of the yep. Ability. yep, we just yeah. think that ultimately that is what the code should be. And as engineers, we shouldn't be making it what it is. We should be making it what it should be. Okay. And that's hard, and we all we sure. understand technical debt. Yeah. We understand that that's easier said than done. But we're looking at making a moment three that is immutable, and we're kind of right now talking about how are we gonna do that? Do we need to do an alpha release, and then a beta, and then a beta two, and make sure that everybody's happy, mm -hmm. and like, how do we organize with our community to make sure that this is understood? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and how do we make it so that we aren't spending the next five years of our lives maintaining both moment yeah. two and moment three, because right. people uh, you know, just haven't upgraded yet, and they need their bugs fixed. Right. Uh, so that's been a complicated thing for us. Excellent. And uh, do you have an online presence? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can you can find me on Twitter at Maggie Pint or MaggiePint.com. Actually, if you're interested in the progress of Moment yes. and the Immutability Project, I'm the person who's doing all of the blogging about how we're moving forward with Moment okay. and how we kind of feel the way we do. So on my blog, MaggiePint.com, that's the perfect place to kind of check out what we're up to and what we're doing next. Maggie, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. this with us. Thank you. Technology lets me have friends who love time zones.